And everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Monday here on the program. We've got a lot to talk about here today. We had the whole weekend of news to get into, and there is a lot of it. We got updates on Cody, WrestleMania, Steve Austin. Whether or not WrestleMania will be a two-day show going forward. I can't wait to talk about that one. Raw tonight. We got a lineup for Raw, as well as a lineup for AEW on Wednesday. AEW and DDT have formed a working agreement. We're going to talk about that here as well. Gable Stevenson about to head to Raw after winning the NCAA tournament again. And then retiring because next will be his WWE career. NXT lineup, Braun Breakers got a match on Tuesday. For those of you who are fans of his. And we have also got the recaps of both Rampage and SmackDown. Both shows, I would go as far as say both shows, some fun stuff on them. A lot of great matches. I would say very good matches on the Rampage show. I enjoyed them immensely. And there was some interesting stuff on the SmackDown show as well. As we head into WrestleMania, which draws closer by the day, two more individuals found a path to WrestleMania on SmackDown. Well, this idiot Seth Rollins can't figure out how to get himself on the card. So we can talk about all that and so much more here today. 844-913-2727. Don't bother. Not taking calls yet. But you can text us at 425-780-7566. You can email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com. You can go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. And you can grab yourself a cameo, F4W Online. What are you waiting for? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Cody Rhodes has reportedly signed with the WWE. PW Insider reported Rhodes had signed with the company. Multiple sources confirmed with the site that Rhodes had signed about 10 to 14 days ago. Additionally, PW Insider said the plan is to have Rhodes debut at WrestleMania weekend and join the Raw roster Upon arrival, Dave Meltzer reported the plan for WrestleMania 38 is Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Rollins lost a match to Kevin Owens on Monday. The winner would host Steve Austin on their talk show during WrestleMania weekend. So it does appear, and I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. But it does appear that this is going to be like that uh, that John Cena thing. I can't get a path to WrestleMania. I'm just going to show up at the show anyway. And then... Uh, I guess it would be the debut of Cody. I don't know if he's going to debut on the WrestleMania show or if they will shoot the angle on the go-home show for WrestleMania. But it appears that uh, what they're doing is what they're doing. And it'll be interesting because we we know that uh, letting everybody know, even though it's a secret, works. We saw this with CM Punk be the most notable we saw it with Brian Danielson. We even saw it with Jeff Hardy. They were constantly dropping, oh, this erratic behavior of Matt Hardy. I mean, it has been it has been proven in the last year that you can basically tell everybody, and actually this goes way back, way, way further back than that, when you would book a, a certain match, uh, Bianca and, and Becky, if they did the stipulation that, if Bianca wins, she gets the title. But if Becky wins, they're going to cut off Bianca's ponytail. They're telling you who's going to win. I don't need Fauntleroy here to go over the lineup. But the point is, you know, this works. So we'll see if that's what they end up doing. How would you do it? Because I guess you have three options. You just do the Seth shows up at WrestleMania and you decide to do it there. Or... Do you ha- do you do something on the go home show? And then in that case, do you advertise it? Because then that's the other question. Do you advertise Cody Rhodes is coming to Raw? 
to, to answer Seth Rollins' open challenge because he's got no other path to WrestleMania? Do you not announce it at all and have Seth do, I don't know, what his talk show at WrestleMania and then have Cody meet him up there? You know, what, what path would you go if you were the... the well, they're, uh, they're already so, so far down this stupid path that, like, there's, <laughs> there's nothing that I could suggest that would be any good because the whole idea that Seth Rollins can't get a WrestleMania. I mean, it's absolutely stupid. So I'm trying to... You're asking me to try to book around something that's already stupid. (laughs) If I were going to have to book around something that's already stupid, I would have, I guess, like Sonya Deville come out and just go, bro, you don't have a path to WrestleMania. And you're wasting time on our shows by coming out here and, and, you know, whatever. So here's the deal. If you don't have a WrestleMania match... By the end of next Monday's show, you're out. You're done. There's no WrestleMania. Just go home. Come back next week. Then that's like the big, the big plug. The go-home show of Raw. If Cody does not have an opponent by the end of the show, that's it. There's no showing up at WrestleMania. It's done. It, it must be announced before the end of Raw. Then you're telling people there's going to be... You don't have to tell them it's Cody... But everyone's going to know. No one's going to think, oh, yeah, I'm sure Raw's going to go, he's not going to have an opponent. It's going to be over. <laughs> They're going to know that he's going to have an opponent by the end of Raw. You tease that it's going to happen. You save it for the end, and then away you go. Or I guess, you know, there's always a fall off at the end. So if you want to do it at the top of the second hour or whatever. But it, that's that's the way that I would do it. Let people know on Monday it's Cody and Seth at WrestleMania. Uh, try and sell a few more tickets. Whatever, but that's what I would do with this this goofy storyline they've already got. You know, because I don't think it's going to, because of the situation they're in, it's not like Cody's name is going to lead to a bunch more buys. I I wouldn't think, at least that, you know, AEW-only fans who have come along in the last couple of years who go, oh, wow, Cody's going back to that place I've only heard about? Maybe I'll check it out. I'm sure there's maybe one person like that, but not many, not enough to make a difference, and... Because of how stupid this whole thing is, I could see Sonya Deville doing something where he she sends Seth Rollins home, like you say, come back next week. But for me, I think he takes over a segment at WrestleMania, and then that's when Cody comes out and Cody's return on the big stage. For and yes, he can have his big Raw re debut the next night, but I think. Considering the situation that he's in and considering it's not going to push any more buys if he's advertised or not, that you just continue to tease something like this. And then he appears at WrestleMania and that's his big re-debut on the grandest stage of them all for Cody Rhodes. We got uh, Raw tonight, Allstate Arena, the lineup for the show. Becky Lynch. This this is this is a new one, by the way. I'll get to I'll actually do that one last. AJ returns to Raw. Since for the first time since he got concertoed by Edge three weeks ago, RK Bro versus Alpha Academy in a non title match. You know what I'm saying? It's for you. Yeah, of course it is. There's a lot in the show that's for me. <laughs> and uh, Finn Balor versus Austin Theory in a non title match. So, anyway, a lot of non title well, matches fair. here on this that's, show. That's, that's more than fair. And uh, the Becky Lynch thing. You ever notice how we used to talk about plans change and people are like, oh, what a cop-out. Okay. (laughs) If plans don't change, all right, plans don't change, why did they shoot an angle last Monday where Becky Lynch beat up Bianca and said, next week I'm coming for your hair? And then in the middle of the week they announced Bianca's not going to be on the show. She has a broken hyoid bone. Well, plans change. So anyway, the storyline is that, uh, and what an irony, by the way, Bianca has a broken hyoid bone. Could Did Gorilla sworn... Monsoon write that release? Uh, no. You know who wrote that damn release? is me and Lance. We've been talking about this for weeks now. <laughs> Ever since Becky got hurt, we talked about how Lance was in a match with Christian, and this stiff feller clotheslined Lance right in the neck and broke his hyoid bone and almost killed him. And we were hoping that it wasn't a hyoid bone that was broken on Becky. And then, lo and behold, we find out that Bianca broke her hyoid bone. Of course she did. (laughs) Thank God the butcher didn't break Darby Allens on Friday. You know, you guys could just buy a bunch of cameos. How much are they? Writing crew. 50 bucks. Wow. I I had to raise the price. 
Damn. It was out of control. And you're still getting triple your value. Has that slowed down the stream of requests? or My, my uh, cameos are like a Rolex watch. Ah. Yes. The value is significantly more than the... <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Griselda merchandise, watch out. The next F4W sweatshirt's going to be 150 bucks. You're right. What are you mad about, Dagan? That I raised the <laughs> price to 50 bucks? He didn't get his in in time. Well, what were you waiting for? Yeah, you are getting three times the value. Hey, listen, if you don't believe me, go to my cameo, F4W Online, and look at every, every single rating. Brian. Five stars. Brian. Everyone, everybody says it's Monday. Why don't we just play worth one more. of your samples? No. Why? Because there is profuse profanity. We would be kicked off the air if I played one of my cameos. <laughs> Nobody's asked you for like. You know, are you doing this for like the thirteen-year-old and twelve-year-old kids too? Like uh, I did one <laughs> hey, for. Brian, a, say happy birthday, to actually, my kid. I actually and did one for Carlin. a three-year-old, which I don't think I swore, but it was really long. <laughs> Yeah, Dagan wants to start his own cameo to bury my cameo. Bury my cameo about what? What are you talking about, Dagan? Oh, are Dagan, you just, you just mad because I didn't play his song? Did I bury his song? Is that the problem? Can I get in this cameo bracket that's going on here? Do I have to be approved? Do I need a blue check mark on Twitter before you can they let try, me do cameos? But, I mean, come on. What do you mean, come on? AW and DDT. You guys hear about this? Huh? I'd expect Dagan to have heard about it, but he's busy crying about cameos. Hey, listen, I'll be back in a moment to talk about AEW and DDT. Back in a moment, Observer Live. AEW and DDT have formed a working relationship. Chris Daniels made the announcement via video on DDT's 25th anniversary show. Deal will involve top talent from DDT traveling to the U.S. to wrestle for AEW. This is Christopher Daniels! Said Christopher Daniels. I am the vice president of talent relations for All Elite Wrestling. I would like to take this opportunity to say congratulations to DDT on their 25th anniversary. Holy smokes, 25 years. Mm -hmm. I would like to also announce AEW and DDT have come to an agreement to bring DDT's wrestlers to the United States of America. I, for one, am looking forward to introducing the top talent from DDT to the American wrestling fan base. You know what AEW needs is more wrestlers. Well... It's, it's okay. What they need is to send some of their people to Japan for a while. It'll start. It'll I start. I presume that's going to happen here soon. Yeah, it And will. there was no mention, by the way, there was uh. no mention of a follow-up to a story we had heard quite a while ago, which was that AEW had bought the rights to a Japanese wrestling promotion that was not New Japan. And uh, I don't know if they have the rights to the DDT library, but um, I don't. here's hmm. the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. I was told, I was told that, remember that big announcement about Ring of Honor mm -hmm. that Tony made? Yes. I was told that when he announced that he was going to have an announcement on Wednesday, that this deal was not 100% done. So, my, I've, 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 I've strongly, it has been strongly suggested to me that there was a backup announcement. In case they went on the air live and the deal wasn't done. So there's something else. I don't know. And let me make it clear. I don't know what it is. Okay. But if you remember, there were a lot of rumors that uh, the, in a few, a few days before that announcement came out. And uh, he made the announcement that he bought Ring of Honor and there were no other announcements made. So I believe... I am not reporting this as news because right now it's not news. And I don't know... But I believe, I have to make this abundantly clear because it's going to be all over the internet. I believe that AEW is, is working on a deal with HBO Max. We have heard that rumor for a long time. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Or as others like to say, there's smoke to the fire. Where there's smoke, there is often fire. Sometimes, however, someone's just smoking. But usually where there's smoke, there is fire. And so I believe that there is some sort of uh, deal in the works with HBO Max or some streaming service. And Tony has flat out said, like, streaming service is a great idea. There's, at some point, obviously, unless this place goes out of business tomorrow, there's going to be a streaming service. They'll have the AEW library, 
And I believe that when this deal is made and done, that is when they will tell us what other libraries they have. And I believe that they have other libraries. They obviously have the AW library, the Ring of Honor library. Wouldn't be surprised if they had this DDT library. That's not official. But this is how all of this is, is tying together for me. So uh, nothing is official until it's announced, obviously. But that is my uh, speculation as to what's going on here. Educated speculation. It would make sense. And, you know, DDT and Tokyo Joshi Pro having a relationship with AEW is a, a no-brainer. You know, it, it, it even it was an unofficial thing to begin with because of the relationships of Kenny Omega and Nakazawa and all that sort of stuff. And it'll be interesting to see if that's the case, how they... How they acquire these rights? Is it going to be a licensing deal from Cyber Fight? Is it with with certain matches that feature AEW talent and showcase DDT and Noah and Tokyo Joshi Pro? Is it going to be taking the Wrestle Universe streaming platform and integrating that into an AEW deal? Uh, you know, there. So it'll be interesting to see how they go about this. But the bottom line is. No matter what you say, and I know you, you made the joke a little bit earlier on about, you know, the amount of wrestlers that AEW has, the reality of the situation is now, because of what they do with owning Ring of Honor and Ring of Honor's relationships with CMLL, AAA, NOAA, it now New Japan, I mean, there's there's so many ways that you can see some of wrestling's greatest talent from all over the world. I mean, odds are you may see them in AEW at some point. So how they have spread their tentacles out and, and have these relationships with everybody, whereas, you know, traditionally WWE has always shut their doors, only opened them up when it's advantageous for them. It's a if you're a wrestling fan, it's a really cool thing. You can talk about the business or the the roster, how you utilize these guys, how you bring them in, how you showcase them. You know, Jay White being an example, was that the best way to showcase a guy like a Jay White or whatever it is? So you can always talk about all that sort of stuff. But the bottom line is, you'll, at least you'll be talking about it because there's the chance of seeing so many people. Mio Yamashita, who's coming to the states for West Coast Pro, all these people, you're going to get a chance to maybe see them in AEW for Dream Match. Or, or whatever. MJF said to speak. Two matches scheduled for next week's AEW Dynamite. It man Texas Tornado match was set up on Rampage. Sting, Darby, and the Hardys taking on the Butcher, the Blade, and Private Party. We have also got uh, Chris Jericho, Daniel Garcia versus Alex Reynolds and John Silver. MJF will speak for the first time since screwing Wardlow. And there should be more to this because, like, officially has not released Wardlow from his contract. Wardlow is still under contract to this man. So I think that they're probably going to lead to some sort of match where, like, if, if Wardlow wins, he's released from his contract. If he loses, I mean, there's ways you can go here. Would be another loss for uh, MJF if that's the way they go. But I certainly wouldn't be beating Wardlow right now. So it'll no, be interesting think... to see what they do. Obviously, Wardlow and Sean Spears is first. I guess they could do the stipulation with that. If Wardlow beats Spears, he's released. You could always go that direction. No, but see, I don't think the payoff's good enough that way. Him going through all of these guys to get to him is, well, I guess I don't know how many guys there is anymore because I don't know what the status of Pinnacle is. I guess, you know, the, I don't know if Dax and Cash are still aligned with that group now that Tully's out of the way, but, you know, so they'll have to answer that. But Wardlow defeating MJF, I think, makes sense because how many losses does MJF have? You know, it would be two, and it would be to Punk, and it would be to Wardlow. And much like we see with Japan or any other well-booked wrestling promotion, you can have a guy lose. I mean, look how long he went without losing, for heaven's sakes. He can have a couple of losses as long as they're done correctly and as long as they set up things in the future. You know, no matter what they do with him and, and, and Wardlow right now, three years from now, I can see this promotion looking back with a wink or having them tied up in some sort of way. So, again, if you do these types of wins and losses right you know yeah you, you don't want to always beat the guy but it's not like he's going for the title or anything right now anyway i think it would be a good thing to do and obviously the best possible feather in wardlow's cap gable steveson won the ncaa tournament he is heading to the raw roster according to dave very very soon and will be at wrestlemania 38 so uh 
that's all cool and everything. Let's talk about the uh, the big news here, which is uh, Steve Austin being in great shape. So he's probably going to do more than you'd think at WrestleMania. I still don't think it's out of the question that he does the angle Saturday leading to the match on Sunday. But we'll see what they end up doing. But this is uh, this is what I want to... There's only three minutes left, so I may as well do this now. I don't want to spend 20 minutes on this. Meltzer said that WrestleMania will likely continue to be a two-night event moving forward. Now, I presumed that, so this is not like new information or anything, but he said, and this is a quote, I talked to people there, and they certainly gave me the impression that the idea is two days going forward. They always can change their mind based on what happens. I think they all thought that seven-hour show thing just doesn't work. That's more tiring than the two days. Yeah. Difference in philosophy, bro. Brian. No, no. Yes. This is everything that I have talked about. This oh, company boy. makes everything more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, listen. If you're running a show that's dragging on for seven hours, okay, what is the more obvious solution? Don't have the show drag on for seven hours or split the show up into two days. The obvious answer. The issue, what, God is booking your show and you can't possibly do less than a seven-hour dra- Of course you can. Do you remember? Do you remember the Saudi show, Mike? I do. Which, this show which was three hours long. Uh-huh. It was one hour and ten minutes of wrestling. They had <laughs> one hour and 40 minutes of not wrestling on this show. Yeah. So is the solution to that show dragging at three hours to do two two hour shows in Saudi or to take out all the crap that dragged? Hello? Obviously the solution is we do not need one hour and forty minutes of commercials and video packages on a show. We don't. There oh. ain't no other promotion on this planet that needs to run one hour and forty minutes of 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 packages on a show with one hour and ten minutes of wrestling. Okay, are you gonna argue about the third hour of Raw now? Because you know what this whole thing comes down to, much like that third hour. Because everything you're saying is exactly right. You're exactly right. Yes, you know what? I am. Comes, but it, but you know what? You're wrong because it comes down to the money. And then say it's the, the money. Line. This is my point, Mike. If Brian, it, what are you? It's a corporate thing. No, of course it's he about says, the money. You know I this. I think they all thought the seven-hour thing just doesn't work. Listen, oh, come on. If you're, it doesn't, but I mean, come on. Hey, you know this is about the money, man. Then they should have just said, you know, it's about the money. Of course we're running two days. Bro. It's about the money. We're going to sell. Yes. Dude, then say that. Don't say, oh, the problem is the show's too long at one day. We have to run two days. Don't Ruddle tell sing? me that crap. All you need is cash. Mm-mm-mm. All I need is this break. Observer Live. During the break, Brian raised the price of Cameo to $100. No, oh, shut up. Here's a uh, here's an analogy. Oh, boy. A calm analogy, okay? No, okay, these are good. I'm going to make it simple. This, yeah, this, 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 is, this is what this. this is equivalent of, okay? When Raw was two hours... And they move to three hours, okay? Uh-huh. If you're moving raw from two hours to three hours, and you say, our broadcast partner, the USA Network, would like an extra hour of raw, and they are willing to pay out the ass for it. Therefore, we're moving to three hours. Great. That's what happened. If you tell me with a straight face, well, you see, two hours was just not enough time. <laughs> we have to add an extra hour because we can't get everything in in two hours, Okay. That would make me very angry if you but pulled that's what that. They did. But that's what they did. Bro, bro, you're missing the point. They didn't say that that's why they expanded to three hours. They were honest. Like, we're getting paid a lot of money to go to three hours. That's why we're going. So tell me, the reason you're doing two days is because instead of selling 80,000 tickets, you're going to sell 120,000 tickets. Fine. Peacock wants two hours. They're, they pay. That's one of the things. That, fine. Tell me that. Don't sit here and go, we have to do two days. Because uh, two, one day, it's just seven hours is too long. 
Well, they're oh, right. Uh, <laughs> there, see, it's one of those things. Oh, they never booked a three-hour WrestleMania before. You know this is semantics, Brian, because there's no, somebody not. on the production it's them team lying, right now acting stupid. There's, there's somebody on the production team. There are people there that go, you know, seven hours sucks. I'm glad we're doing two days. That doesn't mean yeah. <laughs> that it's it's the stupid. easiest thing for everybody, if, or that that if you think the that you can't line, do WrestleMania in less than seven hours, you're stupid. That's course. the bottom line. Of course. But the bottom line is, even though it's been unsaid, is this is obviously about corporate things like making money and content creation for Peacock and all the other horse crap that they, you know, will say about all of this stuff. That's just what it's about. And I know they're not flat out saying it for you, but they're not going to. They're not going to say that for you. But everybody knows that already. Bro, I'm, telling you, why, about I'm telling you why I raise the price for cameos. It wasn't worth my time at thirty-five dollars, especially when people are wanting me to watch the main event of Nacho Libre. I should have charged two hundred dollars for that. That was misery. What a horrible doing, match! Are you doing cameos or stupid human tricks? Well, apparently I was doing stupid human tricks, so I raised the price. <laughs> I also spent your... so much time on them that I'm like, bro, I for eighteen dollars I did that when I could be spending time with my kid. <laughs> Making it worth my while. Obviously, it's business. You better be careful. You understand, There's a Dagan? Lot of do you know what business who, is? There have been a lot of people who've thrown a lot of money around uh, uh, this website for trips and things like that over the years. You better be careful. They may really raise the ante up and see what you will do for cash, Brian Alvarez, where you will stop and, and your morals will kick well, in and I, say, I, I, I can't even stop. do this. I will stop. Somebody wanted me to do a cameo bearing Jim Cornette, and I denied it. I'm not doing that. What? Do you want that revenge coming for, back at for you? What, for $35, of which I only get a cut of that? Like, you want to just, like, cause a lot of problems? No. It'd <laughs> be funny for the rest of us with the pro- promos. would be fantastic. Now, I did do the one for Bruce Pritchard's <laughs> birthday. I had fun with that one. Did he fire back? No, I just wished him a happy birthday. Oh, well. I hope he has a great birthday. Maybe he'll send one to you His now. His show is horrible, but I hope he has a great <laughs> birthday. These two things are not... Just because you write a bad show doesn't mean, like, I want you to have a bad birthday. Well, this is what I tell you all of the time. I have to tell you this thing all of the time. Two things can be true. They can. They can, Brian. This coming Tuesday, it is Braun Breaker against Robert Roode. So we can finally, you know... Is Cable Stevenson's going to be on the main roster before Braun Breaker? I just... I hope that's not the case. Braun Breaker's been on the main roster. But I am laughing at the idea that... uh, No, but I mean as a regular. Somehow Robert Roode is the most protected guy in NXT. At he least, is. At least until Tuesday. It's, well, now he's got to start losing to build towards this Braun Breaker, this big redemption story for losing to the guy who always loses Dolph Ziggler. That whole thing, boy, that sucked. And none of it in the grand scheme of things is really going to matter as far as Braun Breaker's career and everybody's going to forget about it. And the DVD or whatever the streaming thing is of the time will just gloss over the story and nobody will really care. And there'll be somebody saying, I read The Observer all those years ago. They screwed the whole thing up. None of it will matter at the end of the day. But my God, what a stupid way to get there. What a waste of a way to try to get to it. You know, in this case, you could have just held the title off of Braun for this entire time. If Ciampa was never going to go up to the main roster, brought Dolph and Rude down and actually really built towards something. So this was going to be his big, mighty crowning moment. We've also got Solo Sokoa versus Roderick Strong in a stand and deliver North American title qualifying match. A, a kid... We'll be facing Grayson Waller also in a qualifying match. The Creed brothers will face the grizzled young veterans, so we can all say a prayer God for bless. Yeah. GYV. Oh, God bless them. I love, oh God, there's nobody more realistic than, than the Creed brothers. I want the Creed brothers against Braun Breaker and Gable Stevenson now oh, in a dojo. God, I just, no. I don't want it to be on TV. I want somebody to just film them. In a it just somewhere in a mat somewhere in the back of the uh, of Winter Haven or whatever the hell the name of that place is. My God, it would be fantastic. Are we sure that someone hasn't hacked Dagan's account? Is he losing it? Well, first he got mad about cameos. Now he's he's predicting that WWE will release uh, Braun Breaker. Dagan, what are you? I know Vermont's got fun things up there. Fermented maple syrup. Dagan's on apparently right now. And then also, uh, even though we got WrestleMania like two weeks away or whatever, the finals of the Women's Dusty is uh, free Tuesday. 
I guess it hasn't been much of a tournament, to be fair. <laughs> Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai, who talks to herself. The woman who sleeps in the ring and the woman who talks to herself. They're in the finalists against Io Shirai. And what a Kaylee great Ray. representation of Dusty Rhodes in his WWF career is Wendy Chu and this version of Dakota Kai, for heaven's sakes. My God, I hope Io and Kaylee win this thing. Jesus Christmas. This, this uh. bro here can't believe Mania's in two weeks. Where have you been, brother? It's in two weeks. Nobody cares. I had somebody on my Twitter I earlier care. on just say, I'm well, I mean, WrestleMania. but there's a lot of people who aren't because, I mean, look, if you're not interested, if your number one thing with WWE is not Johnny Knoxville, is not Pat McAfee, is not that sort of thing. I mean, you got Roman and you have Brock, which has been the best thing in all of pro wrestling since the time it started. But the reality is there's not a whole lot else to sink your teeth into, is there? If you're if you well, are wrestling first. I want to say this because uh, and I'm a fair man, yes. and somebody here on the uh, chat says that the builds for these matches have been horrible. Listen, he said the 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 builds been atrocious. Here's the deal. Yeah. Okay. No, hold on. Hold on a second. Hold In on. Some cases. I'm a fair man. If you don't watch the shows, and you're only listening like recaps or whatever, I mean. You may think that the build has been bad, but let me tell you something. If you look at the build for this show as compared to virtually any other show they've done in the last, I don't even know how long, they have done a very good job. It's a fair low bar. Build. It is a low bar, but it's true. <laughs> Let's look at the matches here. Uh, Becky and Bianca, they're doing a good job with that. I mean, they've done angles. They've tied in the storyline leading all the way back to SummerSlam. We're probably going to end up having title versus hair. I mean, drops have been beaten a few times. Tell me another women's match that they've done a better job building up than this one. It's not Charlotte and Ronda. That, I mean, they've tried, okay? But, it's, but it hasn't I'm been as I'm totally good. not into that feud at all, and I think the match is going to be bad, okay? But they're trying, all right? There you go, yeah. Ray and Dominic versus The Miz and Logan Paul. I mean, they've they've had focus on that. I mean, it hasn't been like a, a fantastic build. I'm not giving like you that, that one. I'll give you the other one. One, one right now. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Happy Corbin with the Madcap Moss thing. I mean, they've been building up Drew and Corbin for like two months now. And Drew's been kicking ass. I'll give yes, you that one. Yes. Usos versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Listen, they haven't really done an angle, but bro, if you've been watching SmackDown, I can't wait to see this match because this <laughs> Boogs is awesome. Is this a push? Have we'll you call guys, this a push. Yes, of course. Have you guys been watching Boogs? He does his comeback no, no. where he literally <laughs> presses guys. Remember how the warrior would put a guy and he'd bounce him on his head and he'd go, because he's all blown up and he'd do like one press and drop him? Yes. Boogs gets in there and he's one, two, three. He does 12. <laughs> then he holds a guy and he starts curling a human. One, two, three. And then he hits his finish and pins him. Bro, this guy is awesome. I'm still calling this a draw for right now. This oh, is a draw. Man. I'm Usos not giving you that versus Nakamura and Boogs. That's going to be a sleeper. Mark my words. And Charlotte and Ronda, they've been trying, but they haven't done a very good job. At least they're beating the hell out of each other. At least they're going off the air with like just nonsense happening between the two. It's a it's an attempt, but this is another one. I'll put it in the category of of Boogs and Nakamura. And uh, I mean, it's right now. It's in the middle right now. It's I can't I can't say it's been good because it really. I mean, it has it. I guess, okay, you want to give it? I'll, I'll give I got to keep going one. here. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, I have not I have you. not been into Edge and AJ. I think the build for this match sucks. No, I mean, it seems, yeah, it's, no. It's whatever. Uh, I also am not a fan of the four-way women's tag build. Also no. sucks. Yes. You got weak champions who, who like, aren't into each other, and uh, it's just horrible. It's everything that's wrong with the women's division outside the top. Now, do not tell me that they have not done a good job with Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn. <laughs> they've done a very good job with that match. I don't even want to hear they've done a bad job with Pat McAfee and Austin Theory. They've done uh, a really good job with that match. Well, no, and Pat, Pat McAfee, dude, this guy was so awesome on SmackDown Friday. He is unbelievable. And then, I, I, dude, go to the YouTube chat if you're going to tell me they haven't done a good job with Brock and Roman. They've no. done an excellent job yes. with that match. So... Yeah, is it the best build to a WrestleMania I've ever seen? Well, of course not. Like you got to go back to to when you would you know build a WrestleMania for a year or or at least three months from Royal Rumble. But but going back years, I mean, show me WrestleManias where they've done a better job building these matches. I want to hear it. 
But the problem is, again, and it's all a matter of what you look at when you are when you would rather see, say, a build towards Ricochet and Sami Zayn in a rematch or something like that, or have these angles be treated with not the same gravity as Brock and Roman, but kind of the same, like, let's take them more seriously. And that's the problem is even though some of these builds have been uh, they have been OK they really haven't been all that good. There isn't that fire behind Charlotte and Ronda as there once was. There isn't that fire behind some of this stuff as maybe there should be. And if you are looking at matches first and aren't that WWE fan first that really is looking for the anything can happen at WrestleMania, you know, big party, which for this is your year for it with Vince McMahon and Cody is and all of this random stuff that's supposed to be taking place and all of these celebrities, quote unquote, like the Logan Paul of the world that are going to be there if that's not your bag then yeah i mean this whole thing has been relatively weak and dragging for a wrestlemania this person here says that they did a better job with mania 35 oh god that is new york new jersey well I refuse to put that one. Well, on. you know, and this is like with Owens and Austin, like it's and I, I know I just I wish they would have had a more definitive plan or a real understanding on what he can do or what he can't do, because that's, you know, it's almost like it's getting lost in the mix. And I know it's going to be on SportsCenter the next day. I know it's going to be everywhere that Steve Austin came back and he did this. I just I I think you should be really building to it a lot more than Kevin Owens wearing the funny cowboy hats. And he's been great. Seth has been great because I think they're incredibly entertaining in what they do and they seem to be having a good time, but it has not been. I mean, Steve Austin should be a bigger deal than it is. The thought of him coming back in Texas, goddamn, that should be all over the place right now to me and mainstream. It should. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Ah. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I choked as I was coming back on the air. Ah. Uh. Ah. All better. Which actually, now that I now that I think about it, I don't gonna, make a Matt Ryan joke. I was going to read the uh, uh, the lineup for the uh, uh, New Japan Cup. No spoilers. <laughs> oh, of course. But now I can't even talk. So you know what? I got old Fauntleroy. <laughs> He's going to tell us what the last night's matches were. But no spoilers. Okay. Last night's matches were Will Ospreay versus Zack Saber Jr. and Shingo versus Hiromu. Thank you. Hiramu. Here I I he's he's working on his pronunciations. You know how it goes. Are you sure he's a he? He's he might have been Fauntleroy's sister. He's little. I know she's out there. Haven't you ever met a little person with a high voice, Mike? I they actually exist. I have. I know. They exist. They cost extra too. Trying to get uh old Fauntleroy to make an on screen appearance, but he's he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> He's so, self-conscious about his size. Maybe, well, maybe you will have to wait for the Oli fans. You'd for know that. about that. What's uh, the Oli fans? What? Oh, yeah, the Oli, Oli fans? Only fans? No, not the Oli fans. The Oli Anderson, where it's just pictures. Oli, of Oli should Anderson have an Oli story. fans. <laughs> you just get cursed out by Oli. Yeah, he could put a bunch of pictures up from back in the day of him in his gear. <laughs> Oli fans. Hey, we're out of time, everybody. But I want to thank y'all for listening here today. F4W Online on Cameo. Don't miss out, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners over the studio. Filthy Tom up. 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Video.f4wonline.com. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.